Okay, I'm going to say, well, let's get started. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Kim. I'm one of the community learning specialists with Do Space, and we are, um, I believe this is part four of our series with Miles Davis. He is the founder of the After LLC, a social media marketing um, uh, company that does sustainable um, and influential business marketing, um, branding, things of that nature. He is going through a series um, for social media marketing. Um, again, we are in part four, and today's topic is grow your social media community. Um, if you are interested in watching the first three um, webinars on this, um, I would we have those on our Do Space. Uh, YouTube channel, which I will link in the chat here in a few minutes. Um, and yeah, I will, um, if you have any questions, please put them in either the chat or the Q and A. And um, Miles will, I guess it'll depend on you if you want to answer them at the end or, you know, as they come in, but they will get answered. Um, and yes, go right ahead, Miles. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me again. Um, I am the founder of the After LLC. Um, you guys will be able to send me any questions um, to my email, which I'm dropping in the chat right now um, after our class. Um, and I'm, I'll be able to send you guys some extra resources if you have any other additional questions. I'm actually dropping our website as well. Um, so you can check that out. Um, today, we're going to be talking about engaging with your customers on social media. Um, your customers or your clients. Um, so we're going to talk about how, how to build that community, um, what that looks like, and how it can help your business to reach higher successes. Um, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Um, give me one second. I'm not the greatest at Zoom. Every week we have a, I think so. I got a new computer today, so I'm, we have to do some system preferences really quick. I apologize. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're gonna talk about engagement and growing your social media community. Um, Engaging with customers on social media. So we're going to talk about how um, important it is to have easy communication, um, provide value, give back, um, involve your community, and tell your story. So communication between you and your customers on social media is a very important thing. Um, it's it's important because when a customer is able to easily communicate with you, they're able to um, tell you what they like and what they dislike. Um, they're able to give you feedback on all of your products. Um, they're able to um, also share share with other people how they've enjoyed your products or how they enjoyed your services. So communication on social media and being able to be easily reached um, is, is very important. Um, Excuse me, I'm pulling up um, a example of that really quickly. Um, 
again, communication is super important to, to your success um, with studies showing that 57% of consumers will stay loyal to a brand um, if they have more human communication. So it's important to have the communication through DMs, um, through responses on social posts, um, because if you want to build a proper community, um, you can't hide behind your website. Um, instead, you need to make your messages feel like more proper human communication. Um, if your followers know how to have a conversation with you, or if they don't even know how they can have a conversation with you, then you won't have a community. Um, communication is going to be the foundation of all that you do, um, which means you need to make it really easy for your followers to talk to you. Um, at the same time, how you communicate on each um, channel will be different. So if you have Twitter or you have Instagram or Facebook, um, those are going to be different communication styles. Um, for example, the way you communicate on Facebook will invoke a different response if you tried the same method on Twitter. Um, so your followers want the easiest method of communication for them. Um, and just some examples um, that you might want to implement, for example, Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger will continue to be a big deal um, in, into, into the foreseeable future. Um, when someone arrives on your page for the first time, make sure there are pinned posts at the top of your timeline that lets them know that your page slash community is all about um, how they can contact you. So make sure that people can see right away when, you, when, they, when they visit your Facebook page that you are willing and ready to communicate with them. Um, you can utilize Facebook click to messenger ads too. Um, and I can share an article about um, Facebook click to messenger ads. This is, this is from Facebook for developers. Um, I'll share that in the chat here. Really quick. Chat, chat. And this is just, um, again, the, give me a second. It's ads that click to Messenger. So you're able to, to promote your page on Facebook um, and specifically promote the fact that you are able to communicate with your clients, which could go a long way. Um, so check that, check that out. Um, also launching a Facebook group. I, I, I helped to launch um, and manage a Facebook group for a client of mine. Um, and we have thousands and thousands of people that engage within that group. Um, if you don't have a Facebook group yet for your business, um, for your industry, I would suggest creating one. Um, a Facebook group is a great place to gather um, your community together then you can reach out to the your whole community directly via live question and answer sessions or other types of content in which you directly ask your community um, if they have any questions for you. Um, make sure that you engage with the community by responding to the comments and creating a lighthearted, um, but you know, professional, um, positive and even fun atmosphere that people feel right at home in. Um, so creating that Facebook group around your industry can help you to find um, potential clients, potential influencers, which we'll talk about later, um, people that really are involved with your industry and, and can help you to create your specific social media community. Um, as that group grows, um, hire community leaders and moderators um, who will help you keep a tight ship. And um, I will share with you guys a little bit more information about Facebook groups um, and how to create a Facebook group in the chat as well. So make sure you check out how to create a Facebook group. Um, that will really help you guys go a long way in finding your community um, and being in communication, direct communication with them. Um, now let's talk about a little bit about Twitter, um, getting involved with your Twitter, your community on Twitter. Um, Twitter can be great for drumming up business, um, but you shouldn't use it just simply for business reasons. Um, engage in social listening. And this is something we talked about last week. Um, find the conversations that, we are, that are happening among your followers and get involved. So when you have 
it, it, this goes back to Facebook groups, this goes back to Twitter and Instagram. When you have people who are engaging with your content, it's important to, to engage in social listening. Find out what conversations they're also engaging it, get engaging in and start being a part of those conversations. Um, chat to them and ask them questions, learn more about them and show them that you're interested in what they have to say. Um, be communicative and make sure it goes both ways. Remember that now you have a community and it's not about the product, it's about the people. So make sure that you're continuing to connect um, to, your, to your community um, outside of trying to sell them a product. Um, Instagram stories is also a great way um, to connect with your community. Instagram stories is a great place to hold conversations with your followers. Um, it's one of the best places for, to show your human face and really build your community. You're able to record videos of yourself. You're able to ask poll questions. You're able to ask open-ended questions. Um, so really use, utilizing Instagram stories is, is one of the things that I think is the most effective when engaging with your community. Um, so I'm gonna drop a blog also from bloggingwizard.com. Um, and it's just gonna talk a little bit about Facebook story or Instagram stories um, and kind of getting around the algorithm so that you can make sure that you're connecting with, with your followers. Um, using, I talked about question stickers. Um, let's talk about in, in live chat on your website as well. Um, this goes outside of social media, but I'll share, I won't go to, into detail, but having a live chat on your website, I believe Do Space has one. Um, a few of my clients, I've installed a live chat with them. Um, this Here's an example of a live that you can use. It's a platform. Um, there are there are many, you kind of have to find which one works for you, but I'll have this drift live chat so that you guys can kind of see what that, what a program like that looks like. And you can start doing some research to find one um, that fits for you. I do have other suggestions that I can share with you guys, um, but send me an email if you would like to know a little bit more about live here on your website. Um, we're going to talk next about providing value as well. Um, so building an engaged community isn't really about grabbing people's interest. Um, that's kind of short term, short term thinking. So really, when you already have a community, then you want to worry about providing or grabbing people's interest. Um, social media isn't really the place that uh, where you should be indulging in. Um, just self-promotion. You shouldn't really be just thinking about how do I continue to promote my product, promote my business? Um, it's actually the opposite. You should be thinking about um, what are people going to engage with? And people are gonna engage with, with content that has a lot of value. Um, and value starts and ends with problem solving. So for example, if you were able to, if you were able to provide content that is solving a problem for, your um, community, your social media community, then they're gonna find value in that. Use social listening. We talked about this again, we're gonna bring this up again. Use social listening to undercover uh, or uncover your audience's pain points. So figure out what the people in your community are interested in and you know what are some of the problems that they're facing in some, in some way that you can offer a solution. How can you better help your community out? Um, you can host question and answer sessions again on Instagram and find out what the community members are most struggling with. Um, you can do a poll on Twitter. You can ask some open-ended questions on Facebook. Just really start to ask questions so you can figure out how you can, how you can find solutions for, for your followers and your um, community. So for, make sure you provide value. Um, you can create an awesome, some awesome blog content that will also help you with your SEO, but it also will help your community find value in your website, in your product, um, if you have other content that they find value in, that educates them, that helps them overcome obstacles, um, et cetera. So you really want to make sure that you are, you are providing something that's outside of your product um, that provides value to your followers. 
Okay. Can you guys see this? Was was this not full screen the whole time? I thought it was full screen. Um, let's talk about giving back as well. Um, so I believe that the more you give, the more you'll get back. So the more that, again, this goes into providing value for your, for your followers. Um, but remember, few people really care about your brand, um, but they'll start to care more about your brand the more that you give to them. Um, yeah, and you don't have to do a lot. You don't have to, you know, give away things all the time or, you know, we know that, you you know, people's time and everything is very valuable, um, but you should look to be generous to your community. Um, it's your community um, who is giving your their time by posting and commenting and offering value to other members. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you give back. Um, so here's a few ideas, um, for example, running giveaways, um, giveaway contests or sweepstakes um, really help to engage a community. So if you have a product or a service, offer it in a giveaway, um, make, make people engage with you. Um, in, in social media, it's easier um, than ever for a brand to run their own giveaway or contest. So, so um, make sure that you're thinking about how you can offer your services or your products in a way that gets people engaged and a giveaway is a, a great way to do that. Um, it, it'll boost engagement among your community. It'll raise awareness for your brand. Um, it, can, it can also convert into leads. If you were to give away a product or a service that someone enjoyed um, so much that they felt they needed it, then they would come back to you um, and obviously have to pay full price for that for the item or that service. Um, so make sure that um, you're incorporating giveaways because they can be super successful. Um, and there's 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 times where you know we've had huge giveaways um, and we've raised a lot of money for some of the nonprofits I've worked for. Um, just by just by offering a giveaway. So it, it gets people engaged. Think about doing some giveaways. Um, here's a resource that I'll drop that could help um, you guys to think about some giveaways. They have some resources, a blog on this website as well. Um, that can help you guys think about how to structure those giveaways and how to how to make sure that those things are successful. Okay, so involve your community. Um, we know that you know you're passionate about your business and and that's your passion. Um, but if you want to create an engaged community on social media, you need to make sure it's your community's passion too. Make sure that your community is involved and, and loves this work or this product as much as you do. Um, and the easiest way to, to do this is, you know, creating content that is generated by, by, your, by your followers, by your community. Um, so it's what they call user generated content. Um, and I'm gonna type that in the chat. It's not a part of my slides. Just so you guys know that term, user generated content um, is when your own customers generate content for you, um, thereby turning into, excuse me, thereby turning into micro influencers and brand advocates. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, influencers and brand advocates and how we create those later. But it's an excellent way to build an engaged community and organic reach. Um, and it's there's nothing better than having other people hype up your product or tell other people that they liked your product or your service um, because it's not coming straight from your mouth. Obviously, we talked about social media is not a place for just self-promotion, but having other people generate content that is um, it shows you in a good light to other followers and other people a part of your social media community can go a long way. Um, 
here, here a few examples of how you can encourage user generated uh, user generator con generated content. Sorry, I can't say that. Um, user generated content. Um, for example, you can share photos and videos of your customers using your products. Um, you can even offer, say, you know, five, ten percent off if you send me a video or, or a photo of you using the product. Um, and you can, you can share that with people so that it's coming from your customers and your clients' mouths. Um, that, that way people recognize that, you know, this is working for people that have similar interests as me. Um, so they, they will be more readily to subscribe to your products and your services. Um, and then also make sure that you're adding a call to action when you do this so that your community knows that you got a chance to, to be featured by you. Um, so when you, and when you share someone else's testimony, you know, maybe that's when you say, um, share your testimony with us now. Um, share how you feel about this product and continue to invite people to share their opinions about what you're doing. Um, I got a question from Mar Margie Trimbley. It says, can you post on your Facebook page 10% off if someone is seen wearing your product? Um, yeah, you can you can offer any promotion, anything that's going to get people engaged that makes sense for your business and makes sense for your overall business plan. But if you want to offer a promotion to um, get people engaged and seeing in your product and using your product, then I would definitely encourage that. Um, that's going to go a long way with um, continuing to build a community that supports your your business or your organization. Um. So I'm not gonna to go too deep into involving your community, but I would do some research on um, user generated content and how to do that. We're gonna talk a little bit more about creating influencers um, and advocates for your business and employee advocates a little bit later. But again, user generated content, um, it can go a very long way. Um, tell your story. Um, Telling your story is is very important to connecting with your with your customers and with with your community. Um, you can always make them care more about your story. So we haven't really touched on this, um, but oh, um, the need to make an emotional connection with your audience is very important. Uh, once you can do that, you're well on your way to putting together an army of loyal followers. So when people really connect to your story, connect to the way that you built your business or your organization or the way that you conduct yourself in business, um, you're gonna really continue to build a loyal community um, to ensure that you're not just another company to people, um, that people just buy products from or subscribe to their blog or their channel or whatever. You need to demonstrate that you're unique and what's unique to you and what's important to you. Um, in other words, what is your story? Um, your story is what creates an emotional bond between you and your, your clients, you and your community. Um, it's where um, they see your value kind of resonating on its own. Um, they see you as a person, they see you as a business owner, and they're able to really connect to that. Um, and that, that goes a long way. Lorraine Robledo, and I hope I'm saying your names right. I apologize if I'm getting it wrong. Um, ask if you don't have a biz, biz Facebook group, but have a Facebook group that is in the same niche, how do you approach the growth without seeming self-promoting? Um, again, make sure that you're providing value. Um, it's not self-promoting if you can help to educate or lead someone in the right direction. Um, people will see that you're providing value and they'll start to respect you as an industry leader. Um, they'll start respecting you as an educator. Um, so it'll seem less self-promoting when you're offering services or products to them that can help them on their journey. Um, so again, make sure that you are providing value with, you know, more than self-promoting. I would say make sure that the balance is definitely leaning towards providing value more than self-promoting. Um, so I would just think about, is this, is what I'm sharing providing value to the person who's reading it? Um, that's, that's important. 
So telling your story is super important. All right, we're gonna move on to employee advocacy. And this is what I was talking about earlier about creating advocates, but what is employee advocacy and why is employee advocacy important? Um, I'm gonna pull this up too really quick. Can you guys still see my slides? Let me know if we can still see the slides. Yes, okay, great. Again, I'm not a Zoom wizard, so I hope to take a Zoom class at Do Space soon. Um, I use Zoom every day for work, but all of the all the features I'm getting used to. So let's talk about what is employee advocacy. Um, employee advocacy is the promotion of an organization by its workforce or by its employees. Um, this can mean employees sharing information about specific products or campaigns. Um, it could also mean that they share brand content that's helpful to anyone in your field of expertise or in your niche. Um, it could mean that the employees offer a glimpse of the company culture, lots of things. So if, like, if an employee is talking about your business, your organization in a positive way on social media, that's employee advocacy. So we're gonna talk about how we shape employee advocacy so that it's, it continues to feed into our overall business plan. Um, so um, all of these activities can help to boost. So again, we talked about, you know, a glimpse of company culture, um, sharing helpful content, um, talking about specific products or campaigns and all of these activities can help boost brand reputation with both customers and potential new recruits. Um, employee advocacy um, can take many forms as we talked about both online and off, but th the most effective and common way for people or employees to advocate for their, their organization or their business that they work for is through social media. Um, so why is employee advocacy important? There was a recent study, and I'm going to share um, this from sciencetech.com in that. But there was a recent study that found that employee advocacy benefits companies in three key ways. Um, let me drop this in the chat really quick before I talk about these three ways that employee advocacy helps the helps the business. So it's a it has a one, it has a positive impact on growth and sales because in, of increased brand awareness and positive perceptions. Um, two, it has a positive impact on human capital, um, that is your team, um, and it improves staff rec recruitment, retention, and engagement. Um, and three, it improves brand reputation and helps improve issues management. Um, and I'm going to talk about, I'll share with you guys what issues management is um, in the chat as well. Because um, crisis management is, is very important um, when it comes to social media and engaging with your, with your customers. It, it, it's a little bit um, going deeper than what we're talking about right now, but I definitely want to share this with you guys so that you can um, read over this as well. Crisis management is so important when it comes to social media and building a community and continue to have loyal followers. So make sure you guys check that out. Okay, so that's why it's important. Um, just a couple of employee advocacy stats um, or statistics. Um, your employees already, most of them probably already have social media profiles. I mean, most people in the world have Facebook at least. Um, they may be even um, on some of the platforms that your brand doesn't exist or your brand doesn't have. Um, you know, we're in, the, in this six week course, we're mainly talking about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but you probably have employees or, or members of your organization you know, they get on Reddit or they get on Pinterest or they get on other platforms that you don't, that you don't um, engage on. And so that's really, when you think about employee advocacy, you know, strengthening your reach and helping you to reach other people that you wouldn't otherwise, excuse me, and wouldn't otherwise, this is definitely 
this is definitely important to think about is how are my employees on different places in different places at different times and I can be utilizing that um, is important. And just an example of how you can extend your reach. Um, when employees share just six pieces of content on LinkedIn, um, your, your, your business and your organization can see some big gains. Um, for example, now you have six job views. Maybe you have three company page views, one company page follower. You'll start to see your, your statistics on your stats on your analytics on pages grow because of just from one person sharing something. Um, for example, on Facebook, yesterday I have a new um, administrative assistant um, with the after she shared on Facebook um, yesterday that she had started a new job at the after. I got about nine new likes. Um, There's multiple people engaging her on her page. Um, I saw a boost on my website. So Showing, you know, sharing on her personal Facebook that she has started a new job, people that are interested in her and what she's doing with her life um, were interested in, in, in my business as well and started to, to check that out. So it's really important um, to make sure that you're encouraging your, your, your employees to share um, things that are happening at work, things that are happening with products or services, because what people that are interested in them will, will by extension, be interested um, in your business. So employee advocacy is definitely important. Let me move to the next slide really quick. Um, so the, how to build employee advocacy. So we're going to talk about work culture. We're going to talk about setting goals and KPIs. We talked about KPIs before, but those are key performance indicators. And then we're going to talk about, um, identify leaders. So how to identify leaders within your employee group. Um, and I'm just going to check in again. Everybody can still see my slides, right? I think it's going smaller sometimes, but I just want to make sure everybody can still see that. Great. Thank you, Kim. All righty. All right. So how to build a um, employee advocacy. So workplace culture. Um, so for employees to become brand ambassadors, they need to feel that at work. They need to feel, they need to love more about their jobs than just their paychecks. Um, they need to feel at home when they're at work. Um, so it's important to create, create that workplace culture. Um, the 2020 um, um, Elderman Trust Barometer found that 73% of employees um, expect and um, expect prospective employers to provide the opportunity to help shape the future of society. So I'm gonna share this, this uh, study. With you guys. In the chat as well. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people who are searching for jobs, especially millennials, especially Generation Z, they're going to be looking for businesses and organizations that have a higher social purpose. Um, and so, of course, not all businesses are going to are going to have a social purpose. I mean, you might have a business that just sells shoestrings, um, but at least maybe the maybe the business maybe the business doesn't have an obvious social purpose. So you have to um, so to help your business or to help employees um, expectations reach employees expectations for social impact. Um, for example, you could identify your company as an industry dis uh, disruptor that inspires innovation. Um, you could focus on service like customer service and being engaged with your with your followers and your customers. Um, you can show support for employees in time of need. Um, so for example, if you were 
you know, we were, we just, we're still dealing with a pandemic. If you were a company that um, helped people to make sure that they continue to pay their rent or their bills or um, while providing social distance and while providing time off and um, things you, you can show support for your employees in time of need, then you become a, a, a company with higher social purpose without necessarily your actual products or services have anything to do with, um, with that. Um, uh, another example is that you can emphasize your company's reputation as an industry leader. Um, you could also give back. So doing charity work, um, doing giveaways, all of those things will help you to continue to um, create a workplace culture that is about, you know, in a higher social purpose. Um, it's, it's also critical um, to develop a high trust culture. Um, there's also in that elder, uh, the L, uh, I cannot ever say this, a Delman report um, found that trust is a key driver of employee workplace recommendation. Um, so you wanna make sure that you can, you build a high trust culture as well. Of course, workplace culture is also all about making sure your employees love to come to work. And that's what I said, they wanna make sure that um, they feel right at home when they're at work. So for example, Target uses um, the tagline, work somewhere you love um, and it's recruiting materials. Employees share um, career successes and day-to-day -day wins on social media using the hashtag, work somewhere you love. Um, so that's, so if you are hiring, hiring, make sure that you're thinking about how do I continue to build a culture to where my employees love to work and also can share that as a recruiting tool or as a way to continue to boost my business and my, my brand on social media. Um, so that's what Target does. They say work somewhere you love. There's a hashtag. People post pictures of them doing various different things throughout the day. Um, I'm going to share an example of that on Instagram in the chat. Check that out. Um, so just thinking about how you can how you can do that, how you can build a community um, of employees that love to, to post about the work and love to be at work. Um, let's talk about goals and KPIs um, for your employee advocacy program. So this program we're building to continue to build um, or to continue to recruit employee advocates to, to share our content and share our products on social media. Um, employees may already be posting about work on their social media feeds, um, but without an organized, organized system and clearly defined goals, um, you have no way of tracking those results. And that's important when we're thinking about those performance indicators. How do we track um, the growth from our social, our employee advocacy program? How do we track our employees posting for us and how, what that does for our engagement on social media? Um, the more specific, and we talked about this last week as well, we want to make sure that our, all of our goals follow the SMART method. And if you want to learn more about the SMART method, um, you can download my ebook, and I'll share that in, in um, the chat as well. There, you can also go back and look at the um, video from last week as well. But I will share ebook just um it talks a lot about the smart method and how to how to follow that and i drop that in the chat um, but you want to be really specific the better you define your goals the easier it will be for your employees to understand what's most helpful how what post um will help you guys help uh, the business to reach reach their goals um, for example, we go back to Target. Target says work somewhere you love. Hashtag, obviously that's a clear recruiting tool. So we want to make sure the last link is not opening, talking about the Instagram link. Okay, I will figure out, they might've just deleted that post. Um, I will figure out how to share with you guys an example of Target is work where you love. Um, during the question and answer section. So please remind me um, about that. 
sorry about that. Um, I think it's Jaime. And Kim just shared last week's video to talk about the SMART method. Um, but again, the better you define your goals, the better your employees are going to be able to know which 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 things are that they post on social media are going to be the most effective to reaching your goals. Um, if your goal is to increase awareness, encourage employees to post about um, the brand in general. So if um, if you're launching a new product, just create some shareable content that your employees can be proud of, um, that they can share on social media. Um, an advocacy campaign should align with at least one of your company's primary business goals. Um, so just think about, so just think about, um, you know, if your if your business goal is to sell more of a specific product or to um, to sell a specific service, then how do you inc incorporate that into your employee advocacy program? Create, create shareable content that an employee can be proud to share um, on their social media, that they're proud about what you're doing as a business so that, they, that you can continue to um, lean on their followers and the people that are interested in them to grow your business. Excuse me. Okay, so um, once the campaign wraps up, I think that, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Give me a second. Advocacy, an advocacy campaign, again, should align with your overall business goals. Um, and once the goal is clear, you can decide which social media metrics to track. Um, these might include um, share of voice, website traffic, leads. Um, I'm gonna share what share of voice means. And this is from the Hootsuite blog. Um, so read a little bit more about share of voice because um, we won't go into that today. But again, this is a way that you can track, you can track um, if you're reaching your goals through this uh, employee advocacy program. So again, what make it, make it clear to yourself and in your business plan, what are the metrics that you're going to track um, when you're thinking about using this advocacy program to grow your business? Um, the campaign wraps up. You can summarize and show return investment. So your ROI um, include general in, uh, metrics as well as that. You can talk about your increase in reach, your increase in followers, your increase in likes, things like that. Um, as well as you know how many ways are engaging um, with that. So some key, some top, some top that you guys can can use, and I'm going to share this in the chat as well. Oof, I got a little proof line here. Um, you can read that, and then also that's available in the ebook as well if you download the, what I just shared in. But um, some metrics that you can follow or keep an eye on are the top, top contributors, organic reach, engagement, traffic, and brand sentiment. Um, so just think about just think about those things when, when you're talking about your employee advocacy program and how to track it. All right, we're going to move on from um, employee advocacy. If you guys have more questions about employee advocacy we, program, we will be dropping a blog in two weeks that goes into more detail about employee advocacy. Um, and also, again, send me any emails um, asking more questions about this and I can share as many resources as I have available to you. Um, and again, I dropped an email in there. Um, just ask more questions about employee advocacy, but we do have to kind of move on. Um, to our next point. Um, so identifying leaders um, with this employee advocacy. So when you're when you're thinking about who, which one of my employees um, is going to be the most effective on social media um, for large companies. Um, the the kind of the C-suite often has the most visible social media presence, um, at least until you put an, an employee advocacy program in place. So 
again, the, the kind of the corporate level people are going to have the most visible social media presence um, as far as your company goes, just because, you know, they're building the business or sharing with it. People are engaged with their, with them. Um, but these top leaders are usually not the most logical drivers of an employee advocacy program. Um, instead, tap into people who have a more natural social media uh, uh, presence, um, who are enthusiastic about the company and the brand. So again, these are workers that are on the ground, um, who are you know working in your business every day. These are the people who are going to be the most effective. Um, you want to empower them to build your, your employee advocacy program, um, engage them in defining and communicating campaigns and goals, um, or creating proper incentives. So if you have a giveaway, make sure that you have employees sharing this giveaway um, with their friends and with their family, because that's when you're going to get the most engagement. Um, they will help you learn about what kinds of tools and resources employees are most likely to use and share. Um, so for example, when you're having conversations with the people who work in your business, you know, talk with them, you know, what, what are some of your followers or what are some of the people that you're engaging with interested in, um, or what, you know, what are they using? Where are they at? Um, so that you can continue to reach them through, through your employees. So again, um, identifying, identifying those leaders you have to have the conversations. You have to make sure that you're talking to people who are on the ground, um, not just the leaders in your business, but leaders on social media, you know, people who are engaging the most on social media, um, who have lots of followers, who, who um, are commenting and liking and posting often. Those are the people that you will want to continue to be a part of your um, employee advocacy program. Um, so again, identifying leaders in your business is important. All right. Um, just talking more about the program and we talked about, again, uh, Sorry, we talked about work culture, we talked about setting goals and KPIs and identifying leaders, but how do we actually structure that program? Um, we wanna make sure that we're creating social media guidelines. Um, if you are interested in, in a template for social media guidelines, um, I will have that for ready for download on Friday and you guys can send me an email. Um, it's a social media guidelines template you can download and you can kind of figure out, you know, what is appropriate for your business and your employees to share on social media and engage and how, and um, what are the guidelines on how to engage with followers on social media um, and so on and so forth. So I have a template that you'll be able to download on Friday. Um, also, we talked about creating uh, resources for employees to post. Um, so having logos available to your employees. Um, and logo PNGs available, having um, promotional posts available for your employees to, to post, um, things like that. So if you have new products or services, make sure that you have content that your employees are proud to share on their social media. Um, that way that you're, you know, you're able to continue to boost those things and also reward your employees. So give them incentives for sharing, for sharing on their social media. Um, you know, you could maybe even say, you know, if you get 100 likes on this post, then you get an extra day off. Or if you get 100 likes on this post, then we'll boost your boost your pay for the month. Um, you know, give there. I mean, I'm just throwing out examples, but make sure that you're rewarding your employees um, for helping you to, to boost your business and help to improve your engagement. All right, so we're going to go into brand ambassadors and influencers. This is a little bit different than employee advocates um, because you're the people outside, people outside of your business, um, and just people who have a, a social following on um, social media. So let's talk about um, influencers and how to find them and why they're important. Okay, so 
Whatever that. So what is an influencer and why are influencers important? Um, so an influencer is somebody that you that is on social media who has an already has an established following, already has people engaging with their content that can help to boost your content as well. Uh, you all have seen them on social media. Um, so people who are saying, I love this t-shirt. Um, it feels so comfortable. I can sleep in it. I can, it, it breathes. It helps. I can move. I can work out in it. Um, make sure you use my code for 10% off on this website. Um, or people who are saying, I've tried this product um, and it's helped me to lose weight in 10 days, or it's helped me to live at your lifestyle. Um, here how, is how you can also um, benefit from this. Product. So you've seen, everyone's seen influencers and we wanna talk about why they're important. They're important because it's not, it's somebody other than you, um, somebody other than you promoting your product and telling people why your product is valuable and why your product has helped them. And people rather connect to other people using a product than again, we're talking about the difference between promotion and self-promotion. Um, it's always better for someone else to promote your product than it is for you to do it yourself. Um, so it's in, that's why reviews are important. That's why, um, um, yeah, that's why reviews are important. So it's important to make sure that you're having other people talk about the value of your product. And that's where influencers come in and why they're so important. So who should you choose to be a brand ambassador? Um, you wanna make sure that they're relevant to your brand. So for example, if you were selling um, workout, workout clothing or gear, you might want to choose a brand ambassador who is big on working, big on health and fitness, um, who has a follow following that is engaged in health and fitness. Um, and those are the types of people that you want to make sure that you're choosing to be brand ambassadors, be relevant to your brand. Um, um, the influencers audience that goes in that goes into relevancy. Um, influencers, your influencers audience has to be engaged with your your niche and engage with your community on social media. Um, so your influencers audience, again, if you sell workout clothing, you wanna make sure that they're also engaged with health and fitness. Um, because, because if you were to choose an influencer who was engaging with people that did have no, little to no interest in your industry, then they're, who are they selling to? Who are they promoting to? People who have no interest in it. So make sure that your influencers audience um, is interested in your products and your, your industry. Um, influencers engagement rates. Again, if someone already has a following or already has um, people engaging with their content, um, you want to make sure that you're choosing people like that because you want to kind of seamlessly fit into what they're already doing and their, and their social media strategy that already exists. Um, so again, checking those engagement rates um, is important. Um, influencers credibility. Um, you're aligning your product and your business with someone. So you want to make sure that they're a credible source, um, that people respect them, um, that people take them seriously. Um, because you don't want to align your business with someone that doesn't, that doesn't meet your standard of credibility. Um, so you want to make sure that your influencer is credible. So how do you find these influencers? Um, within your audience, you can find them. So again, when you're starting these Facebook um, groups, when you're you know, asking questions on Instagram, when you're starting polls and getting involved in conversations on Twitter, these are the types of people that, the people that engage with you are likely to be following people that potentially could be influencers or they could be the ones engaging themselves. So you wanna make sure that you're just checking within your audience, within your community for influencers. Um, people who have a strong voice within that community can potentially help you to, to boost your product or your service. So make sure you check within your audience um, first to find out who has the strongest voice and who can help you to boost um, your business. 
Also, we talked about hashtags before, but searching hashtags. This is really um, a great way to find people who are relevant to your industry. Um, so when you, when you research relevant hashtags um, for your business, for your industry, there's most likely people within that business have also found that those hashtags are relevant to their industry. So searching within those defined influencers um, is really going to be effective for you because they're already engaged with specifically your industry and clearly their audiences as well. Um, you can also create an application on your website um, for influencers. The larger you grow, the more people will want to um, engage with your product. Um, so again, creating an application on your website saying, asking for you know name, asking for social media handles so you can do some research um, and asking why they want to engage with your product is going to be important. So um, again, you can create a website, an application on your website. So that is everything I have for you guys today when it comes to building a social media community. Um, do we have any questions? And you guys can drop that in the chat or you can drop that in the Q&A um, section if we have any questions on what we talked about today. Again, we have some resources dropping this week on our website and on our social media um, that will help you guys to build this uh, social, your social media community. Um, I dropped some resources in the chat. You guys can also email me at any time and ask some questions as well. Tracy, thanks for amazing help. You're welcome, Tracy. Make sure you join us next week. Um, I don't, I am spacing on the title of my class next week, which is crazy. Um, so I'm gonna, Look it up before I. Well, while, while we're at, uh, waiting, I actually have it. Uh, it looks like it is. Oh, um, nope, that is live. So make sure you join us tomorrow for content marketing um, fundamentals. Yeah. So we're going to talk sharing content, um, how we market our content, um, how we create and curate great content, all of those things. So we're going to talk about um, building, building your media page and creating dynamic content next week as well. No questions. And just we'll give it a we'll few more a couple, seconds to, couple you know. to see if anyone has any questions. But again, you guys can check out my website, check out my ebook. Um, make sure you go and download that. I'll share that again in the chat. And this is this ebook that I'm sharing is a six part ebook that I will be releasing um, over the next few weeks. Um, you're welcome, Lorraine. Um, this is a six part ebook. This is the first part um, talks about um, how to use social media to scale your business. Um, we talk about the smart method in there, which is which is helping you to reach your goals um, in business. Um, you're welcome, Jaime. And social media is a is a very um, it's simple, but it's also complex. So I, I I try to to give as much information without overwhelming you guys. Um, but again, feel free to email me and ask me any questions, or contact me through my website, and we can I can help to share any resources that I have um, to help you guys answer your questions a little better. Okay, if there's no questions, I thank you everyone so much. Um, and we'll see you next week for content marketing um, fundamentals. Thank you everybody for joining welcome, us today. Um, yeah, uh, right, Kim, make sure, good? yep. Make sure that if you are wanting to join us for next week's um, webinar that you're going to our website, dospace.org and going to our calendar uh, to sign up for that webinar. All right, thank you everybody. Um, so yeah, and here is the link to that, um, to next week's uh, event. So thank you everybody and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.